Hello there. Welcome to 2018 and sipping off the cuff. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman over there is... Jim Johnston in Youngstown, Ohio. And Jim and I, for uh, one of our early versions of 2018, we have been dissecting TC Craft Tequila. And and the, the, the most unusual part about this whole thing is that these these folks are based in Nashville <laughs> yep Na you know I, and and I'm I, I'm laughing but I'm really very serious when I say that Nashville will be the next hotbed for tequila well Nash and I'll tell you what probably based in Mexico because or in, in Nashville because Mexico on this bottle the gnome is not that pronounced but right there Nashville real big Yep. So uh, they're they're proud of where they're coming from, but uh, it, it so far has not impacted their product in any way. No, no, um, we have really, really enjoyed um, the the all three uh, expressions so far: the blanco, reposado, the añejo. Now we're going to try the extra añejo. Now this brand, um, short, long story short, they started the brand locally in 2013. This is the recent uh, branding. I, I, we had actually, uh, 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 their, their brand ambassador reached out to us on LinkedIn and we had to wait like a couple of months for these bottles because they were rebranding. So this is what the new version is gonna look like. Very cool. Um, I mean, they sent me table tents. They sent us some great, you know, some really good POS. I even have one of the owners, um, uh, Phone number, it was really cool to send us that. Todd and Chad Botteroff, of, of, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Those are the two guys responsible. And they, as far as we can, as far as we have tasted, this line is stellar, man. It just builds yeah. on itself and builds on itself yeah. and builds on itself. So, um, but there's no real information on the extra idea except what's on the label. Yeah. Um, nine years. Nine years. Look at look how dark this thing is. Yeah. This, this is, and and I'm 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 looking up at you know bottles of whiskey and bourbon. This is the darkest thing that are, that is going to be on my shelf that isn't rum. So, <laughs> um, Jesus. this has spent some time, and it's really it it looks. No one's gonna. I mean. Tequila newbies aren't going to look at this and say, oh, that's tequila. <laughs> no, I'm scared. Uh, I am. I'm really scared. Uh, I'm going to use my Jarrito that I've been using from Chisholm Trail. Uh, hopefully Stossel will, will pick that up. And uh, you're going to you're gonna continue with the Glencairn? I'm going to continue in the Glencairn in the, uh, in the whiskey tasting fashion because, because uh, the Anejo version of this was, was you know, for whiskey folks – this is what you wanted to go get, and so I'm expecting the same thing out of this. Well, I, I'm. Uh, uh, you probably can't see this, but I'm. I'm. I'm swirling this in the jarrito, which is how you swirl uh, on a flat surface, and just to doesn't need a whole lot to open up. Beautiful color. I. I mean, that this, really is incredible. Why do I look at this and, and say that it's like in? It looks like licorice to me or something, man. That's, that's, some, that's some dark stuff. Yeah, I mean, this has got a dark caramel color to it that just makes you feel like there's something else in the tequila. Not the, no tequila could pick up this color by itself, but nine years in a dark dark barrel will do some things to you. It's got, <laughs> yeah, really. It's got some, you know, um, you were talking about some rum, and, I, and I've, had, I've had more experience with rum than I have had with whiskeys or scotches, but... Uh, this reminds me of a rum that's made with like molasses rum, you right. know those those Jamaican those dark Jamaican um, right. island tequila, almost like an Appleton or a, like a yeah, Solera yeah. aged even. Yes, yeah, or or you know what else too? Um, sherry. Yes. In sherry barrels, you know the Solera method, um, they consistently keep that that darkness, that that dark rich color to it. Right. It's much richer than what I'm used to seeing in an extra enamel, so. Wow. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> this is ridiculous. 
Wow, it's this minty. This is up on every every iteration at this point. This has taken all of that depth and complexity in the nose and just taken it to an, uh, another level. It, it's ah. Oh. Oh. I got mint on the nose. I got we got the sweetness that we got first in the repel silo that we couldn't pinpoint. Then we we nailed it on the añejo, and now it's even now it's just coming up to say hello. <laughs> yeah, you got a, li- a lot more of the caramel and the wood. A lot better sense of the um, that that tobacco and leather at the at the very end of it that smells like. But all of it is, all of it is the exact right amount to blend together. There's nothing that steps out to me. There's nothing that steps out, and 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 dominates any of the other scents on this. It, it really does smell like all of those nose elements are sharing this overall bouquet. It just now wow. I just I just got like anise. And not just a slight anise, like a pronounced, almost like an ouzo. Yeah, yeah, there, yes. So I was right, licorice or something like that. Yeah, this is, yeah. Holy And I'll tell you, that, that's probably a little bit of the sweetness. And if you catch ouzo or sambuca in the right way, it smells like sweetness and then mint, but then you get that little bit of that, that, that end note that, that anise has. I think it's that, that little mint up front with that baked spice sweetness to it that gives it that sort of a, like a Sambuca or an Uzo smell. Like you, you've got that, it's like Easter bread, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to compare everything to a baked good. How about that? Uh, yeah, why, well, you know, if, if, if that's the reason that they age them in, in these barrels, because you right. get baking spice. You know, right. we've had extrañejos with dried fruit. You know, some of them are so pronounced that they taste like you're like liquid fruitcake, you know. Right. And not that this is anywhere near that. This is this is really something. Now, the nose on the Añejo was a bit mellowed, more mellowed out. But this one just comes right back at you, man. Yeah, this is this, this has come back to life a little bit. And uh, it's picked up enough that it, it's got it's got its kickback from where it was in the Blanco and the Reposado. Right. Exact. I agree completely. Beautiful legs and tears, just, just, just lovely. It's just pretty to look at. It really is. It really is. Okay, gotta try it. Gotta go. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm getting more of the the bitter chocolate, the or bitter cocoa. Yes. Um, very, this is very this is very baking spice. I get a little bit of a cinnamon flavor at the end of this. Yeah. Not not cinnamon in the generic like gum cinnamon or fireball cinnamon. This is legitimate baked into a pie cinnamon that tastes yes. warm and and very wow. Wow. Oh gosh. Wow. This is a great cigar tequila. I'll tell you that right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. I, I would, in fact, I would venture to say, like we, we mentioned that the Reposado would be a great cigar tequila. I don't, I don't think that I would use a cigar for the Añejo, but I would use one for the extra Añejo. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I, that's just my own personal opinion, but yeah. Wow. And again, that lingering finish, that that finish just, it's progressive. It's yeah. not just all at once warm fuzzy. And I like that. But this is a, this is a uh, like you said, um, Jim, it's like a scotch. Scotch is like that warmth that the more scotch you have, the, the warmer it becomes. And, and I've right. had, uh, matter of fact, I've, uh, our, uh, our CMO, has mentioned that when she's had a great tequila that's aged in a scotch barrel, it's like a like a warm scarf around your throat. Yeah. yeah. And and that's exactly what this on a on a cold winter's morning in, 
in any way. Yeah. You know, this is this and will warm your cockles, man. Wow. On the last, on, on the Blanco and the Reposado and the Anejo, the the nose on this developed with the flavor. So after you had a couple sips, that nose came back. What I just noticed is I, I took another whiff of it. The nose is still there, but it hasn't come to the forefront because the complexity of the flavor and the warmth on the back of your throat, when you take that whiff in, it doesn't, you don't have any place for that scent complexity to go. You've got full flavor now. And it, it just, it, it kind of overwhelms, it, you know, the scent is important to it, but it overwhelms what little subtlety you found on that nose beforehand. Ooh. Wow. 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 I, I, um, I'm speechless. This is really, you called it. You you looked at the color of the Añejo, and, and we looked at the color on this one. And it really, now it's acting more like a scotch. And yet it is still still aged in, in whiskey barrels. But right. I'm getting that warmth that I got from, from the one or two tequilas I've had aged in scotch barrels. Or even rums, for that matter, that were aged in scotch barrels. Well, and in nine years, you're starting to approach the entry-level single malt scotch aging time. But there's a couple eight-year-old scotches that have the kind of characteristic that I'm talking about here because the wood is still... The wood has not imparted the kind of depth of char and and really deep character of the barrel yet but you still get a little bit of vibrance out of it and a little bit of taste of that barrel that comes through in a way that makes it seem like, you know, obviously the barrel is the same age or older than the spirit that was in it. But if you pull, if you pull it out at the right time, it, 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 it's got a taste that's like, that's fresh cut wood. The, the char on that barrel hasn't imparted itself completely yet. And you, you still pick up, I think it's a nice compliment to the little bit of agave that I still get blending in there and it, it's well this is you know, incredible this is a, a big extra añejo so i have had other Ooh. people tell me that you know if you age any tequila over seven years it starts to taste more like anything but tequila and the agave is still here yeah you know I, i'm of the opinion that if you start with a strong agave then your aged versions continue to maintain that extra layer of of complexity yeah. it's much easier to 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 bring to to acquire that complexity if you if you do that with mezcal for instance that we've had scorpion mezcal asian french oak barrels and it just adds that extra layer but with tequila it's tough to do because sometimes the, the barrel just overwhelms the tequila but it's but it's is, there it's there. It's it's less pronounced. It's more in the background. Let's put it that way. The agave on this has mellowed considerably. The wood and the barrel aging flavors have come back from the anejo. Right. On the anejo, I got. It, it was the, like you said. The it beginning was beginning of the whiskey taste. Yeah. With the agave. Right. Now the agave has gone to the background, and the whiskey has come way up front. Well, it's it's a, it, like you mentioned. I think the anejo uh, became mellower. Yeah. You know, because the Reposado made a statement. The Blanco, for sure. You know, and then the Añejo was kind of, was, it was not muted. It was mellowed. And I, and that could be, I think that's what right. they were going for. Because when somebody says, wow, that's a, because it, 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 it made me want to, as I said, it was, it was performing a dual function. It was bringing the whiskey people to to try tequila and and maybe the tequila people to experience try some whiskeys because I right. found myself going hey man this is really good I wonder I wonder what else I'm missing it's weird for yeah. me but with this extra añejo it's it's just oh my gosh and and, and I get I'm, I'm getting the sense here and this is because we 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 got that anise and that licorice nose off of it yeah. It retains its body. It's got a nice full body. It's got the 
the the the scotch characteristics but in a way that almost the sweetness stays a little bit more than than you would expect on a whiskey i feel like brandy and cognac drinkers would love this and i feel like you could get people that like regular old liqueur to be approachable to this well so i i I have some friends that like to drink Grand Marnier out of a snifter. I think this would be perfect for them. Well, you, you know, get that warmth and that depth of flavor that that this provides. I think they could definitely make the transition there. The the other the other thing we were talking about, or that I mentioned earlier, was sherry. It's as dark as a sherry barrel. Or those of you who are enjoying, you know, molasses rum made from molasses. If you're if you're into that, this. This may attract a whole bunch, a whole spectrum of, of aged uh, spirit drinkers from from all from all from all walks of life would want to right. try this and not be disappointed. If you're a rum drinker, if you're a Scotch drinker, uh, certainly if you're a tequila drinker, and like you said, uh, liqueurs, sherry, I, I think, or cognac, definitely. Um, it's not as it's not as dry or, you know, it, no, it, no, it, but, but, but it would, it's reminiscent maybe, you know, you'll, right. you'll get that. Oh yeah. Kind of, you know, wow. This is a spiritual experience, man. <laughs> I'm thinking about the cigar I'm going to take with me and oh, finish. The oh yeah. my God. Now, you know, you're going to have to hold on to this for the entire season of 2018, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got hold on. I got. I got to leave myself some of the bottle here. But exactly. Luckily, exactly. these guys gave us their phone number, and they're not too far away that I can't just drive down there and say hi. Well, you know, uh, if you do, please take pictures and video, and you know, serve it up. We'll we'll put it out there for uh, for our. They're definitely they're onto something. They really took their time. It's again, I know of three or four other just a handful of brands coming out of Tennessee that have really um, really made a statement with their craft tequilas and this is one of them this is the brand this yeah, is this, brand this new is... and and they, they are to be taken seriously uh, I'm telling you Tennessee is going to be the next hotbed for tequila it, it is going to give Georgia a run for its money because Georgia is another believe it or not it, it we were talking off camera Georgia is one of those states uh, that is fairly high in tequila consumption. So I would say Tennessee, in the next couple of years, you're going to see them make that list. So we were here first to tell you, TC Craft, Brand of Promise nominee in the Extra Añejo category. Thanks again to, to Chad and Todd Bodoroff, who were really kind enough, and to Heidi for uh, ringing my doorbell and, you know, uh, yeah, reaching thank out you. to us on LinkedIn. You'll see me down in Tennessee soon, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll say hi to Heidi. <laughs> I, I, I will. Um, that's our take on TC Craft Tequilas. Thanks again for stopping by on our new 2018 Sipping Off the Cuffs. Uh, Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman there in the Ireland t-shirt is... Jim Johnson in Youngstown, Ohio. Don't forget to subscribe whether you're listening to us on iTunes or watching us on YouTube, please let us know in the comments what you think. But whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.